This is the second episode of TWIG. TWIG stands for This Week in Global Health. Today is September the 3rd, 2014. My name is Greg Martin. I just want to welcome the people that are watching this live. People might be watching this live on Google Plus or on YouTube, so welcome to you guys. And of course, a lot of you will be watching this on YouTube as an archived video. Uh, a quick shout out, I believe there are some students in Cleveland and they're studying global health issues and they're actually making this feed as part of their regular, uh, you know, part of their class and curriculum. And welcome, guys. We're delighted to have you here. And please feel free to connect, to connect and communicate with us. This is meant to be interactive. Um, before we carry on, let me just ask the panel members to introduce themselves. We're going to start with Jessica. Jessica, tell us who you are and what are you going to talk about today. Hi, I'm Jessica Taff, and I'm coming to you from the Washington, D.C. metro area. And today I'm going to give you some research updates on um, what's going on in global health. Okay, thanks very much, Jessica. And Jessica, tell us, if somebody wanted to email us, how would they do that? Oh, that's pretty easy. It just emails at thisweekinglobalhealth at gmail.com. We would love your feedback. Okay, brilliant. And next up, please tell us who you are and what are you going to talk about today, Katie? All right. Hi, everyone. So my name is Katie. I'm coming to you from Stockholm, Sweden at the moment. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about cool facts about vaccines. Okay. And Katie, people that are watching the show live, and if they want to ask us a question or make a comment during the show, and we're going to address comments, et cetera, et cetera, right at the end of the show, if people want to ask a question, how would they go about doing that? Well, actually, you can tweet us, and it's hashtag TWIGH or TWIG. Okay, so you can send it, you can get us on, 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 on Twitter and we'll see that question live. You can also put questions in, on, the, on the landing page, on the event page of Google Plus, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just type in, in, in the comment section. We'll see those comments. Please send questions. Again, this is meant to be interactive. Next, Christy. Talk to us, Christy. Who are you? Where are you? And what are you going to talk about today? I am Chris Ronson. I'm coming to you from San Francisco, California, uh, and I will be discussing requests for proposals, or RPFs, as well as taking notes from the audience, or questions from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Christy. Okay, now, Christy, I believe that people can subscribe to a newsletter from us, and that newsletter will have all of the show notes and the web links from anything we mentioned in the show. How would someone mm -hmm. go about that? How, how can people do that? Because that sounds super exciting, doesn't it? It does. The show notes are going to contain all the information, articles, job postings that we've discussed on the program. Um, there, if you're watching this on YouTube, the link is going to be in the video description. If you're hanging out with us live on air on Google+, Plus, it is on the event page. So you can go ahead and click on that link. That will take you to the show notes and sign you up for uh, future episodes as well. Okay, brilliant. Okay, next up, Vanya. Vanya, talk to us. Where are you? Who are you? And what are you going to tell us about today? Um, hi everyone, my name is Vanya de la Fuente, I'm coming to you from London, UK, and I will be talking about two job positions at Gavi and a new candidate vaccine against Ebola. Okay, thanks very much Vanya. And Vanya, tell me, where could people find old episodes of, uh, the, 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 of the This Week in Global Health? So archive videos, where can they go and watch these shows if they want to see old videos or even where might they be able to find this video itself? You just need to go to www.youtube.com forward slash Dr. Greg Martin, and they will find all the information there. Okay, brilliant. So that is the Global Health YouTube channel, and you can watch these videos and other videos that you might be interested in. That channel's got videos on how to get a job in global health, uh, global health ethics, epidemiology, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, we were, we now, I just want to quickly tell you, this episode, we got a lot of feedback last week and people sort of said, look, can we make the episodes a little bit more themed and we're going to try and do that tonight. So tonight we're going to really talk a lot about vaccines and we're going to talk about current news in the vaccine world and we're going to give you some facts and information, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, about vaccines. Um, but before we carry on, we've got some research items and Jessica is yeah, Jessica's going to give us a couple of research items, current research that's just come out in the literature in the last week or two. Jessica, talk to us. Sure, let me give you an update on the research world. So in Lancet Global Health, there's a study um, looking at the cost effectiveness of the Avahan program. This is a large-scale HIV intervention program that targets high-risk populations in South India. Now, in this uh, study, they showed that if you target high-risk populations, you can avert 40% of the infections in this population, but you'll also in avert infections in the general population as well. And you can do so at a cost that's pretty reasonable per person. Also in Science Magazine, this is, there's a study that sequenced the genome of the Ebola virus, and they were able to show that there are several mutations that have been happening during this current outbreak, and that also happened prior to the outbreak, um, and it is diverging from a strain that they think this current strain evolved from, which is a strain of Ebola from Guinea in 2004. 
Okay, very interesting. Now, I'm gonna t we said that this episode is going to focus a little bit on vaccines, and I want to just quickly highlight an organization that I love to bits, and that is Gavi. Now, Gavi was launched in 2000, and Gavi was really launched as, as a response to the fact that we noticed that childhood immunization was not only stagnating globally, and particularly in developing countries, but in fact the rates of vaccines were slowly dropping in some places, and that was very concerning, and so Gavi was launched in 2000, it got quite a big uh, a bunch of money from the Gates Foundation, I think at that point in time they got about $750 million as a commitment over time, between then and now the Gates Foundation has actually uh, given Gavi about $1.5 billion, and what Gavi is, Gavi is what we call a, pi a pri public-private partnership, and what that means is we've got developing countries and developed countries and donor countries, we've got uh, the World Health Organization, we've got UNICEF, we've got the World Bank, we've got the Gates Foundation, we've got industry. So we have all of these different actors, these different stakeholders coming together with one objective, and that objective is to try and increase the number of children that are being vaccinated globally. Gavi has contributed over the years to about 300 and about 370 million additional children being vaccinated globally, and that has translated into about 5.5 million deaths being averted, or what we call future deaths being averted. So, an amazing organization. Uh, I love them to bits, and I, and I really want to give them a big shout out. Uh, Vanya, Vanya is going to actually tell us about one or two jobs that are being advertised at Gavi at the moment. So, Vanya, could you tell us about that? Uh, sure. There are currently two senior job positions available at Gavi. The first one is as Director of Governance, which closes on September 12th. And um, key responsibilities include advising the board and other partners on good governance practices. And um, some of the requirements include 15 years plus of experience. So as I said, it's a pretty senior position. And just being familiar with the processes through which different stakeholders engage with each other. Um, the other position that I wanted to talk about is um, as head of financial management, which closes September 15th. And uh, the person who uptakes this role will be implementing and strengthening the transparency and accountability policy. And some of the duties involved uh, coaching, assessing performance of staff, etc. And just a brief uh, overview of requirements. Uh, this again um, requires 10 years plus of experience, fluency in English and French, and uh, ability to travel 40% of the time. If you want more information on these job offers, please go to the show notes um, for further details. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Vanya. And just as a reminder, the, sh the show notes for each of these shows includes all the information that we talk about, and it includes links to any web pages that we refer to. So where Vanya talked about jobs that are being advertised, you can look in the show notes, click on the link, and it'll take you straight to that job advert. If you want to get the ch show notes emailed to you, so it'll be a weekly email with all the show notes, etc., etc., then subscribe to our newsletter. You can find the link. Uh, in, you can find the link in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube, or in the description if you're watching this on Google+. Now, moving right along, Katie. Katie's going to talk, give us a couple of fun facts about vaccine. Over to you, Katie. I don't know how fun, but definitely some interesting facts. The idea of vaccines <coughs> or inoculation has actually been around for a really long time. Uh, inoculation is the idea of introducing a small particle of the disease into an individual to build immunity, and it goes as far back as 1,000 CE in China. It started with a smallpox disease, which actually affects a lot of children. Um, and so to combat this deadly disease, innovators took smallpox scab particles and inhaled them or rubbed them into their skin, which doesn't sound very pleasant. Uh, but vaccines cause herd immunity, which means that a majority of people in a community have been vaccinated against disease. The unvaccinated person is less likely to get sick because others are less likely to get sick and spread the disease to them. Another fun fact is that vaccines help reduce measles deaths globally by 78% between 2000 and 2008. In sub-Saharan Africa, deaths dropped by 92% in the same period. And also, not all vaccines are given as shots. I know a few people are afraid of shots. Vaccines for rotavirus and polio, for instance, are distributed orally. Okay, interesting facts. And uh, just a little uh, interesting fact for me, I mean, vaccination, the vaccination era that we live in at the moment was really a function of, of, of work done by Edward Jenner. Uh, I think it was in 1790 somewhere. Uh, and that was really the beginning. And that, we've had a tumultuous relationship with vaccines all along. See, when vaccines were originally discovered, it was at about the same time in history where humans began to understand the idea of hygiene and the hygiene hypothesis had come up 
We still hadn't figured out that there were microbes. There weren't viruses and bacteria, etc. We didn't know that. But we knew that you needed to stay away from disease if you wanted to stay healthy. Vaccines was a postulate that was almost kind of counterintuitive. counterintuitive. I mean, it was like, actually, this is take some of the disease and that will actually keep you healthy. And so society struggled with this idea of vaccines. And we've struggled with the idea of vaccines ever since. Uh, and uh, let me, like, for example, in, 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 uh, we had that article from Wakefield uh, in The Lancet postulating that there was a relationship between an MMR vaccine and aut autism. Now, we know that that is simply not the case. Okay, so just for the record, we're just getting this out there. We're going to say it. The MMR vaccine does not cause autism. Okay, it is a, it's a completely erroneous relationship that's been... It often gets picked up by parents because autism presents at about the same time that the MMR vaccine is given. And, they say, and so they erroneously assume that there's a causal relationship. There really isn't. Uh, in, a, in about 2004, we had the government in Nigeria actually stopping the polio vaccination program because of the belief that the polio vaccination was somehow some sort of conspiracy that was was designed to decrease fertility in Nigeria. And of course, they just stopped the program for a very short period of time, a couple of weeks. And in that period of time, the epidemic sprung back to life, crossed three or four borders, and was you know we had a, a new little sort of cross uh, transnational epidemic happening once again. So. Uh, those are just a couple of things. I think, Vanya, you mentioned something interesting earlier when we were talking about the malaria vaccine. What was that? Yeah, exactly. Um, what I just wanted to mention is that not all vaccines actually benefit the person that receives the vaccine. There is a potential vaccine for malaria, which is currently in early trial stage, that actually th that does not benefit the person that will be vaccinated, but rather the community, because it will block the transmission of malaria rather than just uh, benefiting the person who receives it. Okay, okay, so that's the candidate malaria vaccine. And Vanya, uh, something else that you're going to tell us a little bit about is the candidate Ebola virus vaccine. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Exactly. So um, there has been a press release just a few weeks ago about this candidate vaccine against the serious species of Ebola, which is actually the species that is circulating in West Africa. And research thus far has shown that this vaccine is effective in um, non-human primates exposed to Ebola without significant adverse events. Uh, what is left to be seen is whether this uh, vaccine is also effective in humans. So phase one trials are um, to begin right now in September, actually, in the UK, the Gambia, and Mali. And if proven successfully, then uh, successful, then the WHO will be able to implement uh, an emergency immunization program in Africa in high-risk communities. Okay, that's incredibly interesting. Thanks very much, Fania. Um, now, I'm going to ask uh, Christy. She's going to talk us, to us about some requests for proposals. If you're out there and you are wanting to apply for a grant or raise money for your organization or for whatever it is that you're doing, then listen to this part because we're going to hear about requests for grant proposals. Christy, over to you. Thank you, Greg. And just to reiterate one more time, <clears throat> the links to all jobs that I'm going to mention or all grants are going to be in the show notes. So if you'd like further information about any of these postings, please go to the notes, click on the link provided, and that will give you more information on the objectives of the study, the eligibility requirements, all of that good stuff. So we've got three this week. The first one is uh, for M Health or Mobile Health. It's the technology and outcomes in low and middle income countries, and that's offered through the Department of Health and Human Services at the NIH. Uh, they're encouraging exploratory or developmental research applications to propose, or I'm sorry, that propose to study the development or adaptation of innovative mobile health technology specifically suited for LMICs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the due date for that one is a little bit in the future. That one is slated to close on February 19th of 2015. Second up, we've got our Fulbright Fogarty Fellowship in Public Health. That one's coming right up pretty soon. It's October 14th, so get everything ready. Uh, the Fulbright Fogarty Awards are offered through a partnership between the Fulbright Program and the Fogarty International Center of the U.S. National Institutes of Health. And the awards are established to promote the expansion of research in public health and clinical research in resource-limited settings. Um, third and last but not least, we've got the Ecology of Evolution and Infectious Disease Researches Grant. Um, it's a huge group grant from the National Science Foundation and NIH in collaboration with the U.S.-Israel Binational Science Foundation and the U.K. Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council. Projects concerning vector-borne disease, including vector biology and or antimicrobial resistance, are particularly encouraged. Uh, the due date or closing date for that grant is going to be November 19th of 2014. Okay, thanks very much. Christy, okay, now, as you can probably tell if you're watching, I'm not on the screen at the moment. I've, I've shared my computer screen with you, and really what this means is this is the end of the part of the show that's going to be on YouTube. 
If you're watching this live, then don't go away. We're going to stay around and we're going to answer questions and have a little bit of back and forth. But if you're watching this on YouTube, the show's about to end. We're going to, we're going to edit it back and it'll end about here. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Remember, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, the, the links that I've got on the screen will be clickable, so you can click straight on that link and you'll be able to subscribe. You'll be able to support this channel at Patreon. We, we desperately need your support, so please do. Uh, you can follow us on Google+, Plus, and I've got a couple of videos there that you might want to be interested in watching as the next videos that you watch. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. We love you guys. Don't ever change. Always do your best. Don't do drugs, etc., uh, etc., et so on and so forth. See you next time.